Mark Joba and welcome to Georgian Crossroads and today we have another edition of our Prague Diaries from earlier this year. Maybe I should have said Dobry Den. So uh, today what we're going to do is we're going to take a little trip up to from uh, the Malastrana, the little city, the little town, the lesser town up a tramway to, okay, let's see if I can do this correctly. I, I can see it in my mind, but there's a little thing, diacritical remark over the R, which changes it. So it's the, it looks like Patrine, but it's really Patrin or Patrin, Patrin, Patrin. It's the weird letter. Okay, I'm going to try more. To the Patrin Tower. Uh, if you're Czech, you can correct me. <laughs> There's no way. You know that. Uh, and we're going to go up to the, the tower. We're also going to go into my favorite mirror, house of mirrors. And then uh, we're going to walk down the hill from there uh, to the Strahov Monastery Library, which is one of my favorite places on earth. I'm surprised the Honest Guides haven't done anything on this yet, but they really should. So I'm going to do my own version of the Strahov Monastery Library. And this is really a cabinet of curiosities. I actually have a video that I did on my Anadromist channel just dedicated to the notion of cabinets of curiosity. So we'll leave it here for you. There's a link here. Maybe I'll put one at the end as well. And come along with me up the Patrine was that good? Hill. Patrine Hill, for those of you who are speaking English or any other language. Patrine Hill. Okay. <laughs> I'm getting lost trying to say it. And uh, let's come along with me. Let's go. So take any number of trams that go to the Uyaz stop in Malastrana, the little town, get off and you will see all of these statues at the bottom of the Bratrin Hill. And right there, it's not immediately obvious, but that's where the funicular rail that goes up the hill is. There's the Uyaz stop, that's what it looks like. It looks like Uyaz, if you're English speaker. And, of course, people are wearing uh, masks. This was still... This was at the tail end of COVID times. Um, but you still had to wear them in the uh, train. And you're going up the hill. And this this is a nice stop. It only costs uh, just a little extra. You should be getting a card for your transportation. I got a month-long card since I was going to be there for three weeks and I didn't have to think about anything but it allowed me to get on the train and it's a nice train not as spectacular as the funicular in Tbilisi I must say but and I think the reason for that is it's not as steep and you got a lot of trees and such that are guarding your views nevertheless it's a very pleasant ride you can if you're looking backwards, you can see some of the city. Now, I've actually, this is, I've, this is my sixth time going to Prague, and I never go there for a couple of days. I go there for at least two weeks. Uh, it's been averaging two or three weeks. And this is my first time visiting, uh, going up Patrine Hill. Did I say it right? <laughs> I think that's close enough. Uh, and this is also Patrine Park. And I'm going up, I don't go all the way up, but we'll pass by the Pachin Tower. And, but this is a great way to go up. There are paths that go up as well. And there are also paths to the tower from the castle area. And you can walk through the castle area, through the, near the Strahov Monastery, and then there's a, a road that goes up from there. But I do recommend this as a great way to get there. And of course these, if you look uh, in front of the train, you'll see that there are wires, and these funiculars are actually pulled by wires going each way, so that 
the train cars are equidistant from each other. So looking back there, you can see there's the castle. There's one of the roads you could probably walk up to get to the top. We're at the place where the two trains stop. And that gives you a nice view back at uh, Malastrana, uh, off to the right, and the castle, Fradchani area. And of course, this was February, uh, right after uh, the 24th. So uh, it was a good place to get away from the political situation in Ukraine. And a very peaceful up there, especially go up in the morning, first half of the day. More and more people go up in the second half of the day. And I found uh, a fair number of people up there. But then again, I find Prague doesn't actually get so cold in the winter. Uh, but then again, I'm coming from Alaska. If you're coming from, I don't know, Los Angeles, uh, yeah, it's probably cold for you. And... So now we're coming into the station, and we'll get out here. And there's a nice lookout area at the top up here, and we'll spend a couple minutes looking out. Great view of the city below. This is, I believe, uh, certainly on in this section, in the main section of Prague, the highest area here. And I believe the tower is higher than the Eiffel Tower, but that's because it's on a hill. <laughs> uh, if, you, if you're interested, uh, the Honest Guy channel has much more. Yannick talks about Petrine Hill quite a few times. And there's a statue that was sitting up there. It looks like a pilot. And this is the view at the top. Now, this is the middle of, like I said, this is winter. If you were here in the summer, uh, it looks like there's a lot you wouldn't be seeing from there. Uh, because of all the trees and leaves. But nevertheless, there are places to get views. And one of the, I don't know, thousands of statues in Prague, and I'm sure there's some allegorical story involved with this one. Now, I am going under these immensely beautiful eerie branches uh, and from the dead trees and this is obviously a willow tree and I'm on my way to the Pachin Tower and that area there, it's all, it's, I wouldn't say it's an amusement park but there are a couple of things there and I would imagine during the middle of the season in the summer there's probably uh, you can probably get some sort of snack up there that's the actual tower as seen through the trees and another view of it, and uh, it does kind of look like the Eiffel Tower, doesn't it? <laughs> it has, but it's it's smaller, but yet uh, it's you can walk up there, but it, you'd be going around. It actually is kind of a scary looking tower when you get down to it. And this is a little uh, chapel that's up there. What does that say? Was, okay, I didn't have a chance to read it. And this fairy tale, almost Disney-esque uh, castle, it's the other way around. Disney ripped off all this stuff, obviously. Uh, holds the House of Mirrors. And I love this. This is perhaps the best House of Mirrors I've ever been in. Of course, everyone still had to wear their masks during this. Can you imagine getting stuck in this in the middle of the night? I think that would be fantastic. Uh, or really dark, like twilight, and it's getting dark, and you've got to find your way out. And the truth is, all of these little uh, poles, columns, make it even more deceptive than usual. And I have a thing about 
houses of mirrors, I think that they are very much a symbolic object that we make, relating, of course, to our perceptions, but also relating to the meaning of life. Are, is what we are seeing in our lives what is actually there, or is it something in the house of mirrors? And here are some uh, fun house mirrors. But unfortunately, the angle at which my camera is doesn't show you the real distortions, because it's not. they're meant to be seen from a higher vantage point. So, let's get out of the House of Mirrors. I love these windows here. Let's get out of the House of Mirrors, if we can. (laughs) Evidently we did, because I made this video. Uh, Really beautiful crucifix up there. And now what we're going to do is walk down to the Strahoff Monastery Library. Now, this is about the third time in my life I've visited this place. And it is one of my favorite architectural locations on Earth. And the reason is, for one thing, they've got all these old books from the 16th and 17th century in there. Theology books, philosophy books, Bibles. They also have in one of the places a little chamber where they kept the prohibited books. But it's, of course, designed in this ornate Baroque style. And you can see the books here that just have these... uh, They're just mysterious because they're old. But not only are they old, they are quite... They're tempting. You want to know what's in them. Now, of course, most of these are probably in uh, German... Uh, would be my guess because the Czech language was forbidden Uh, but some of them are probably also older from the Czech Republic uh, or the the days of Bohemia and Moravia and they have statues and globes and angels in there but what I really love okay this is I believe this is the philosophy section in here but look at the roof on this very Baroque uh, details of the roof, giving it the sense that it stretches into the heavens. And unfortunately, you're not allowed into the library. You're just allowed to stand at the edge, and there's a rope keeping you out. But uh, this would be my dream library here, something like this. And I just recently uh, started working on my library here, here and built three uh, sections of it. Uh, I really love these dark old libraries. I never understand all these people who have these really clean white libraries, you know, and I'm just like, what is this fashion? Uh, to me, a library's got to look old or funky or something. Now, this is what I really come for. And these are parts of the Wunderkammer, the Cabinet of Curiosities. And this was a way that people had of categorizing the world in the early days when science and museums and collecting things were all still in their infancy. And so people would collect seashells. They, I mean, just look at the cabinet everything is in. They'd collect shells. They would collect uh, whatever they could and try to put it together. And people would come and look at these things and ask questions about them. Like, is that a shell or is that a brain? You see what I'm saying? (laughs) Um, And there are objects here. They really are objects of wonder because often you don't know what they are. Now, when I found this portrait made of seeds, I knew Jan Schwankmeier had been here. And here are some other just strange little objects. There's like a miniature crucifixion in a bottle. (laughs) And then here are these folk, they look like porcelain folk people, but they have these, so much character in the faces. These are not, I think a lot of people now would put this into the category of the creepy. I don't, I think this is in the category of the, the miraculous and the human. And then what is this? I believe, but I could be wrong, that this is perhaps the horns of an animal. 
Uh, that's the the white skull and the horns coming out, a small uh, deer-like creature. But it kind of looks like a big insect as well. Uh, and, you know, like a, a huge beetle. But I believe it's the horns of an animal. And what amazing horns those are. And that's what I love, these conversation pieces. They get you to ask, what am I looking at? What is this? Now, the eyeball is added later. But I, I once heard this was a dried baby dodo bird. What do you think? What, what, what kind of creature is that? And then, this is odd. This is like, there's, there's something attached to something like an egg. It's like a lizard. And then, you see what I'm saying? Dried, I don't know, caiman or croc baby crocodile. Uh, an armadillo. Uh, I mean, as American, that's normal to me. But imagine how weird that would have looked. And then, what is this? <laughs> I... I, I've seen that. I thought, you know, is this a manta ray or something? But I don't know what it is. And why does it have all these shells attached to it? Or are those shells? And then here's the, is that a shell or is it a brain? Well, it's obviously a shell. And then there's a collection of, there's one of, of butterflies and this one's of moths. And as I look at it, I am just amazed I mean, people come that this has been sitting here for 300 years. People come and look at this. Or there is more to the library aspect here. And so this is a medieval book. But look at the illustrations on it. And then you go over to the next page. And not only do you have those illustrations, you have a whole set. Of, there's Jesus with his flock. Uh, Jesus with the birds. This could be the Sermon on the Mount. And then this is just a fascinating piece as well. I find this just highly unusual. Xyloteca, remember that word, 1825. That's what these books are called. They are xylo, as in xylophone, uh, something made out of wood, wooden, block, wooden books. Now, they're not just books made out of wood. They are books of wood. That is to say... There's some that say pine and juniper and other things. That's what's inside of them, those little cabinets. You open it up, and all the parts of the tree are there. And so what you're looking at is the bark from every tree. These are books to help you understand trees. I am just absolutely fascinated by these. And I'm fascinated by the texture. And there's what's inside. Uh... The pieces of the tree, the seed, uh, sections of the branches, the leaves, the needles. And then this is just sitting off to the side in one of these cases as well. Old boots. I mean, those are so cool. Now, it was time to go. Although, look at that statue of a knot. <laughs> That's all I can call it in the window. And here, are, uh, obviously, vines are going to take over. But it was time to go say goodbye to the Pachin Hill and Strahov Monastery. So wasn't that interesting? To me, it was. that's the stuff I live for, finding these strange artifacts. Uh, this really is as close to an old-school Wunderkammer. Cabinet of Curiosities, as you can probably find. If you know of any better ones, let me know. But this one's really great. All the weird objects that are there. And I find in this world of the virtual, the artificial, the unreal, there's something about objects, real living objects, that you know were not just made for a, a photographic uh, you know, CGI, you know, morphing into something. You know it's a real thing. You're sitting there like, is that a baby dodo bird? What are these creatures? Books made out of books. You get, get my point? They're inspirational. And uh, this is my own library here. This is not the real big library I'm trying to bring to from Alaska to here. But this is just a piece of the pie. It's my Georgian library. Something that makes I feel more at home having this library here. So anyway, as they say in the Czech Republic, 
Nasconedano. And as I say in Georgia, Nakwantis. I will see you. Well, I won't see you. You're, you're on the other side of this. We will meet again.